Focus fans, it's Alex Worley. This week's Empowerista is Lauren Gorris Ireland. She is an award winning broadcaster. She is the blogger behind You and Lou, which I love that name, by the Thank way. You. <laughs> and even despite all of these accolades, she is no stranger to the quarter life crisis, so that makes me <laughs> already true. love you. And yes. a self proclaimed cupcake fan. Oh yeah, big fan of the cupcake. <laughs> so when I learned about you, Lauren, what really stood out to me is that you're a lifestyle blogger, which there are a lot of lifestyle bloggers, let's be honest, but you really bring meaning to lifestyle and having it be inspirational and empowering. What is the inspiration for you behind doing this? So everything I do on my site, the purpose is always to promote togetherness and to promote celebrating whatever moment you're in. Yeah, I love that. I think you're such a good example of how you can be one of a million in an industry, yet you're the only one who brings that unique flavor. And you're the only one thank that is you. Lauren Gorris Ireland, oh, you know? You. So I think that should be inspirational for everyone that you can be in a competitive industry and still stand out by just being you like how simple is that <laughs> right you just have to be yourself and that's the, the biggest piece of advice is just staying true to yourself and, mm -hmm. and being authentic to what you love and to doing what you love and sometimes that takes a little bit of time which I know sounds it sounds funny because if you're just being yourself it, it shouldn't take a lot of thought yeah right? you should just be you but in a way it, it does and you also have to kind of think about you know who is it that you're trying to be alongside your audience? So, mm -hmm. you know, I knew that I wanted the message to be positive. I knew I wanted it to be happy and bright and celebratory, but there are a lot of ways you can go about portraying that. So mm -hmm. I, I did put a lot of thought into, okay, how do I want to convey this um, to, to my audience and then the people beyond my audience? And so, you know, that, that takes some, some trial and error. <laughs> it takes, you know, a lot of progress and you just have to keep going. And I think for me, that's probably been the, the biggest uh, bit of learning has just been to yeah. keep going because there are a lot of roadblocks and you kind of feel like you're going insane sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if you keep going, there's you know there's always there's today, there's tomorrow, there's the next day, and you just you keep going, you keep working. Well, I love what you're saying because you don't sound like somebody who has it all figured out. Even though from the outside no. you look like you have it all figured <laughs> out because no. your brand's beautiful <laughs> and you're you. having a lot of success with your blog. But I think it's important to keep in mind that. It, a brand, a person, we're always evolving yes. and we never arrive. And so even at your level, you'll, you're still figuring it out. You probably still have doubts too, certainly. don't you? Oh, certainly. I certainly have doubts. I don't know anyone who doesn't have doubts. Right? And, you, know, you have a really, really good day and, and you get all of the success and then the next day, might not be that great and something you tried might not have worked but I do I live by something and I always say love the process over the plan Ooh, and I love that I really really believe in that because the process is never ending right you're always kind of in this this journey mm -hmm. in this process of your career of your life you know personal and work and so and the, the plan doesn't always work out plan sometimes you have to out. be flexible exactly and it changes I mean my I had a very set plan for a, a lot of years probably through my very first career and I, I wanted to only be in broadcasting it was a very you know I was becoming Oprah and that was it. <laughs> it was a very set career path. But then technology changed and my yeah. opportunities changed and my ability to reach people changed tremendously. So it's it's okay to be flexible with the form if you're holding on to what's the essence of what you're truly wanting to do and not necessarily giving up on that. Exactly. And I think understanding that and knowing that just because you change your path doesn't mean you, you gave up. Right. And to be really honest, that took a lot of personal development within myself because when I decided to make the switch, in a way you, you feel like you failed a little bit, even mm -hmm. though you're switching and you're not giving up, but you're you're making a transition. Mm -hmm. And in a way that can feel sometimes like failure because you, you start questioning yourself and you think, oh, should, should I be leaving? Is this just me giving up? Or is this me recognizing that there's something really beautiful and really great that's also out there that I can develop and so that I would say that was probably the the time of the quarter life crisis <laughs> when I was making that switch because it was always just this one goal and then I really truly felt in my heart I had I had to make that switch and so, so how'd you do it I mean you, you well, got you felt this calling but it's one thing to feel it and then it's another thing to, to act it. on it because it's, it's so scary and like you said even though you were thriving in one industry every single time you start a new project it kind of feels like you're starting over oh, and sometimes yeah. like you're failing a little Little bit so how did you you know actually take action on this well I had I had put a lot of work into my my broadcast career and it's you know obviously what I did in college and then after college I moved to a small town in Missouri Columbia Missouri mm -hmm. and I worked as a news anchor there and I loved my time there the people were amazing I had 
crazy, crazy hours. I got up at one in the morning. Girl, <laughs> I feel you. You know, I, because you've been I'm there. I'm from morning news as well. <laughs> exactly, it's crazy. And yes. I put in all of this time and I was there for a few years and then I eventually ended up moving to LA and I also worked for a digital online news agency called Newsy mm -hmm. while I was here. Uh, and then while I was there, I kind of started to get this itch of, okay, how else can I reach people? Um, and Newsy is, is a digital news service. So I had gotten very familiar, you know, with, with what we could do digitally and, and reaching people in that sort of sphere. And I just, I started my blog, honestly, as a personal diary. It wasn't even really wow. meant to be, you know, what it is today. It was mm -hmm. just, it was kind of this diary of what I was going through. It was a lot of stuff, you know, in the quarter life crisis and, and kind of, you know, moving forward, even when you're, you're, you feel like you're in a difficult time period and all of that. And so it really was just, it was a personal hobby and I had it, you know, that for about a year. And then I was at a crossroads and I had an opportunity um, to, to leave and to, to do something else. And I felt like this is what I, this is what I'm really meant to do. Um, so you really have to enjoy the process. Yeah. And what I love about what you said too, is first of all, you just got started. It was as a hobby, you just got started. Yeah. And then also you did what you loved because that makes the process a lot <laughs> easier. You write about what, what you love doing. you do what you love. And mm -hmm. I love what you just said about just start. You mm -hmm. have to begin, you have to begin somewhere. And I think that is probably the biggest battle. We all have so many ideas and, and we want, you know, I hear so many people who say, I really want to start a blog, I really want to start a blog. And I tell them, just start. It doesn't have to be pretty. What are a couple other things that you think allowed you to go full time as a blogger? So I mean, you really have to dedicate yourself to it. Mm -hmm. And I was almost, uh, I, I was prepared to do that. But when you leave a traditional job, in mm -hmm. a way, for a moment, you think, oh, I might have more time to myself. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to work for myself. I can control my schedule. I'm going to do yoga. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's exactly what I was like, I'm going to go for morning <laughs> hikes in LA every day. Yeah. Like, I thought I was going to have all this time and then still have my career. And I realized very quickly that's not exactly the case. When you mm -hmm. end up investing in yourself and that is what you're doing full time, all of your time turns into that. And so, and I am still, this is a learning process for me and I'm, I'm certainly still in it of, of how to balance that. Mm -hmm. But it, it became, you know, very quickly, it became all consuming. It was what I was doing, you know, on weekends, on every week to every week night, and mm -hmm. there's a lot. <laughs> so talk to me about your friends and family, and I know your hus you're married, so you have a husband. Yes. Talk to me about them. What do they think about this career that you've created? Yeah, well, I think at, at first everyone thought I was a little nuts. <laughs> They're like, wait, you've put a lot of time into broadcasting, and you're going to leave. And I, and also, blogging's hard to explain to someone. It's not right. a clear business path. It's still somewhat new. Yes, it's still uh -huh. new. There isn't a clear mentor in this space and I am very very fortunate to have both a husband and parents who really stood by me mm -hmm. and they didn't they didn't pretend to always know exactly what I was doing but <laughs> they trusted me so you're really lucky that you have so much support around you not everybody yeah. has that in their inner circle and if you don't you have to find it somewhere you know right. because there are always people who are also going to not believe in you whether it's online right. or in person have you ever had to deal with any of that oh certainly and I, I think anyone, especially in the digital space, is going to deal with that because when you put your life, when you open your life up to the public, inevitably you're going to get people who don't like it or who are critical mm -hmm. of it. I understand that. I, I am openly putting myself out there, so I have to expect that there are going to be some people who don't like what I put out there. And that's okay. Usually I have found that a hater, it usually has very little to do with your the content itself and very little to do with you. It's usually something they're struggling with internally and right. for some reason they, they feel the need, you know, to speak out against you or maybe that's how they're sort of feeding their, their purpose at the moment. So I usually don't get too hung up on that. I, I know that. What do you do? Do you respond or do you just ignore it? It depends. Most of the time I ignore it. If it's something, you know, that's that's very personal, I will respond. Sometimes and it's not worth the energy. It's yeah, like it's, you deal with your thing it's not going worth the on energy always, and I'm just going to you know, keep doing my thing. Exactly. Exactly. And there, you know, I, again, usually when people hate it, it has very little to do with you. It just has more to do with something uh, that they're kind of struggling with. insecurity. Exactly. or jealousy or yeah. whatever it is. Who knows what's going on in their world? Right, exactly. And we all fight our own battles. So I just, you know, I try to say, oh, they're, they're kind of going through something yeah. and I move on. Um, but I think it's also really important to look at the positive comments because I am very sensitive. So to be very honest, any hurtful comment does affect me. I wish I could say, oh, I don't, I don't pay attention and I don't look at it. Um, but to be very honest, I'm, I'm really, really sensitive and I'm hurt very easily. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, any kind of hateful comment does, does affect me. But what I do is look at all of the positive comments next to that. And if you have 50 positive comments and two negative, 
That's incredible. Look at all of you the people. You have to look at it as a whole. Exactly. And a lot of times the negative ones stand out more because that's just kind of how we're wired, know, unfortunately. We're wired, yeah. But you really do have to pause for a moment and be like, okay, let's look at the good things that I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And look at, focus on those those positive moments. And I think too, and speaking of, of pausing, and I think that, you know, the point that you just made, I think it's really important to pause and celebrate the little victories. Mm -hmm that you make because that's been a, a really big part of making my business work is to pause and to celebrate a really great moment to celebrate something successful and i didn't always do that i would you know something great would happen and and we would you know do a really great collaboration and then i would just move on you know five minutes later i'd be on to the next mm -hmm. thing and i remember about a year ago it was a summer piece and we did this really fun piece for harper's bazaar and it was the first time that the site had really been featured on on something so Amazing. big like that. It was, yeah. it was it was a was really exciting moment. But I'll say I looked at it and I thought it was beautiful and I read it and then I was on to the next thing. And I remember uh, Meto and Katie, my team, they were with me and we were reading this article in Harper's Bazaar and I thought, okay, that's so beautiful. What, what's our next blog shoot and what are we putting on an Instagram? And they really forced me to take a deep breath and to just celebrate that that moment of being on Harper's Bazaar and we went out and got cupcakes <laughs> and we got champagne yeah. and we celebrated and that was really important. So what is the number one piece of advice you would give a woman watching that has big goals and high standards and wants to go for her dreams? What is the number one piece of advice? I would say be willing to take the risk taking the risk is huge and you have to do it. You can't get to your goals. And it's going to be scary. Exactly. Make no mistake, it's it is going, going to be scary. To be really the scary. fear it's never really mean. goes away. <laughs> it never goes away. I'm still scared every day. Yeah. But you have to you have to take that risk and I, I promise it will be worth it, whether it ends up being wildly successful or or it ends up not working out and you learn from, from those failures. So I think... And then do something new where you can take those lessons exactly. and then knock it out of the park the next time. Exactly. And what is your definition of empowerment? Oh, such a good question. I think it's facing your fears. Facing fear is what ultimately sets us all free. So I encourage everyone to set themselves free and to face their fears. I love that. And let us know what your definition of empowerment is by using the hashtag Empowerista, and we'll show you some love on social media. We'll see you next time.